This video is sponsored by Saley. As some of you know, I dropped out of engineering after one year to make YouTube videos, which I originally started to try to motivate myself to study for engineering. So like every dropout, I still pretend I had it in me, I just didn't want to. What I like the most about engineering is that it's an extremely practical field. If you ask a mathematician what this symbol means, he'll say, that's pi, it's the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. But if you ask an engineer what this symbol means, he'll be like, oh yeah, that's three. Most people know an engineer or two in real life, but don't really understand what they do. To make it simple, when you see a news segment like Russian soldier begs for mercy as Ukrainian grenade drone threatens Foxhole, just know that somewhere an engineer is watching with his girlfriend and is pointing at the screen like, Yo, I designed that cargo hatch, dude. D this is fucking crazy, bro. What a lot of people get wrong is they think that people go into engineering because they like math and science. This is completely wrong. Engineers don't like math and science, they like money. The math and science you have to do is just an unfortunate side effect. While everyone starts engineering by thinking, okay, which type of engineering do I want to do? It very quickly and disappointingly becomes, which type of engineering can I still do? In first year, you just take a bunch of STEM classes, but then at a certain point, everyone has a come to Jesus moment where they have to decide between buckling down, working on their study habits and accepting no sex life, or if they're gonna transfer to business. From there, you'll procedurally experience harder and harder courses until you fail one, traumatizing you into majoring in whatever was the last thing you passed. For example, software engineers scrape by linear algebra, but struggle once things start physically existing. Civil engineers scrape by statics, but struggle if anything moves. Mechanical engineers scrape by thermodynamics, but struggle when things they're working on become alive and the laws of physics suddenly stop working. Chemical and electrical engineers barely scrape by organic chemistry and quantum mechanics, then shake hands with each other and agree that the cream rises to the top. No one goes to grad school because they all have a C average. This is traumatizing because if you hear someone say, yes, I have a PhD, usually everyone is like, oh, very impressive. You must be very smart. But if they say it's in engineering, everyone thinks you're an idiot. This is because getting an undergraduate degree in engineering is like buds training for the Navy SEALs. No one there actually wants to go and fight a war. Everyone knows you just have to do it so you can write a book and go on podcasts. Now, engineers are usually very put together, organized and prepared people who don't like sudden changes to their plans, spontaneity or having unchoreographed fun in general. I mean, the only thing they truly fear is girls. This means if you're a girl, dating an engineer can be really difficult because especially on the first few dates, you're constantly wondering, is he just shy and awkward or actually autistic? Even worse is if you're a girl in engineering because if you ever get frustrated, lean back from your computer and are like, oh, I just don't get how to do this. Well, you should have thought it through, Lily Phillips. This is now a group project. With that said, when it comes to the actual work you'll do, there's a big difference between working on a train and working on a drug to solve erectile dysfunction, despite them having the same effect on most engineers. So it's important to know what you're signing up for when you're choosing an engineering major, so I'll let you know about each one. Mechanical engineer means you make bombs. Civil engineer means you make targets. Petroleum engineer means you make money. Chemical engineer means you're a chemist. Being a chemist means you're a cashier at a pharmacy. Do not try to correct your confused family members. They will not understand. Electrical engineer means you know that V equals IR and the rest you can learn on the job. Materials engineering is just coming up with IRL crafting recipes. Nuclear engineering is trying to explain to everyone for the last 30 years that these are not chimneys. You will be unsuccessful. Software engineering is trying to figure out if you qualify for food stamps. Computer engineering is being relieved that you at least didn't choose software engineering. Biomedical engineering is when you just can't take it anymore and you need at least one class with a girl in it. Mechatronics... Oh, I don't know how that got in there. That's not engineering. Now, a lot of people are scared to go into engineering because they've heard it's a lot of work. But the good news is if you found a course really hard, you'll feel a lot better when you tell a senior that you got 52% on your final and they're like, yo, congrats. This might cause people to ask the question, wait, so the people designing rockets and planes might not have even understood what they learned in school? Isn't that a bit worrisome? And not at all. Engineering is about adaptability and problem solving in the real world, not about rote memorization of textbook material. If you're at work and the software says that your design is at risk of structural failure, just double it. That's engineering, baby. Now, the last question you need to ask yourself before going into engineering is the most important one, which is who do you think would win? The combined power of the military industrial complex, big pharma, the oil industry, and Wall Street all working together, or the English professor who has to teach the engineering ethics class in first year? Because while engineers have some of the most important jobs in society, they also bear a lot of responsibility for the unintended consequences of their actions. And this is why I feel it's my duty to remind students and new graduates of the only question you need to know the answer to, which is when is it okay to violate your moral principles? 
Exactly, it has to be at least six figures. Now, as someone who dropped out of software engineering, it means I barely scraped by first year linear algebra and am deeply scared of things that physically exist, which is why I like using an electronic SIM card instead of buying physical ones when I travel. With this video's sponsor, Saley, I could do just that. I recently went on a trip to Japan for a holiday and to visit some family, and my phone company usually charges me $15 a day for roaming, meaning I would have paid $300 for the time I was there. This is such a bad deal I was about to tear up Japan, but luckily I came to my senses, and just by using an eSIM through Saley, I was able to pay just $25 for a month with 20 gigs of data. I found this way more convenient than trying to replace the physical SIM when you land because you don't have to go through a complicated activation process or immediately realize you were just scammed by a sketchy vendor. Plus, there's no risk of losing your old SIM when you swap it out. If you're going to be in multiple countries, you can also get multi-region coverage or just quickly add a new country whenever you get there. If you'd like to try it out, you can click the link in the description or use the code casually when you check out on the app for an exclusive 15% discount on your first purchase.